पीपल कम ऑनलाइन यहाँ लिखा आता है टू पीपल ऑनलाइन फोर पीपल ऑनलाइन यहाँ से ठीक है Oh, I find people joining. Am I? Can you people see me? Am I audible, Janvi? So, what do you like? Can you see me? Am I audible, Janvi? Can you hear me? Okay, so people are joining in. Thank you so much. This is a new platform for us. Finding it very difficult at times just to talk on phone without knowing who all are listening to you. We can begin in two minutes. Okay, we'll do that. Huh? I can start now. All right, so we can begin. Uh, all right, so good evening to all of you. Uh, nice to see more people are joining in, uh, but we have to be punctual. Uh, so I begin by saying my big thanks to virtual lawyer, to uh, Professor Manjula Batra for inviting me, and to Miss Janvi Sharma. They have been the ones who've been after me, saying that I must give a lecture on copyright law. And as there are so many students who are interested in listening uh, to this field, uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to basically talk about, give you an overview of the Copyright Act. And while giving you the overview of the Copyright Act, the areas that I'm going to deal with are basically what is the, uh, what are the works on which copyright subsists. what are the rights which are present uh, what is the meaning of copyright and i'll begin with some general propositions and considerations uh, which are there which are running throughout the copyright law uh, so to begin with i don't know whether you all of you are having your acts with you or not uh, but it would have been preferable 
uh, had you got the uh, you know the acts in front of you uh, to begin copyright law always i say section 16 of the copyright act is very important because it's one of the very peculiar provisions which specifies that any person shall be entitled to copyright or any similar right in any work whether published or unpublished in accordance with the provisions of the statute that is to say that copyright is a statutory right so when we say copyright is a statutory right i think it's important to have a look at the statute or that should be there in front of you so we all know that copyright act has been amended a number of times and the last amendment which came was in 2012 now as i said that i will be dealing with the subject matter of copyright and then the rights and then infringement and fair dealing to begin with the first important section for us is section 13 of the copyright act which tell you what are the works in which the copyright subsists right according to section 13 there are basically six works in which the copyright subsists the first category of works has four works which is called original literary dramatic musical and artistic works the second one is cinematograph films and the third is sound recordings now as far as copyright act is concerned you know uh, under intellectual property different kinds of properties come up like for example you can have patents only when you file an application and a patent is granted to you by the government only then you are a patent owner for trademarks you can have registration or you may have to use the trademark so either it is by use or it is by registration in geographical indications you get a right only when you get registration but as far as copyright is concerned none of these procedures are required the moment you create a work you get copyright in the work so that means no formality is no formality is required but there is a provision in the copyright act which provides for registration and what it basically says is that if you get your copyright registered it's a prima facie evidence of the particulars given in the register of the copyrights so that's about all it's a prima facie evidence it is not a requirement so the moment you create a work your copyright you have a copyright in it so when i say that you have a copyright in it the question which arises is what is the meaning of copyright and what is the meaning of as i said the first category of works where copyright uh, is the first category of works where the copyright is present is original literary dramatic musical and artistic works so the question is what is the meaning of original but before i go to this i would like to focus on some of the principles as i said and the first basic principle for copyright law is that copyright does not vest in an idea copyright only vests in the expression of the idea so that means whatever expression you give to the give to your idea the copyright vests on that now it may happen that the same idea on the same idea different people are working on it so when different people work on the same idea there may be similarity of work which may come but that does not mean that one is infringing the work of the other so each one of you who works on that particular idea will have a separate copyright on the work that you create now so the question that will arise is what are the things on which copyright vests and what are the things on which copyright does not vest as i said copyright does not exist in an idea on themes on plots on actual events historical events facts these are things which cannot be monopolized the question is why should they not be monopolized now just look at a position uh, let's look at all the bollywood films and in all the bollywood films you will find that every film almost 99.9% of the films they are having romance as one of the uh, you know the major themes around which the entire story goes now if there is a person who monopolizes who gets copyright on romance that means in a way he gets mono- monopoly on romance so when he gets monopoly on romance nobody else can make a film so that means the entire bollywood would come to an end 
look at all our serials which are running on different channels you know the basic themes or the plots are by and large home politics i'm not talking about the nation's politics it's home politics where the divorce or separation between husband and wife gender discrimination there is racial discrimination that one is talking about or uh, you know uh, sas bahu kind of episodes which are present now if you start protecting them if you start monopolizing them then again what will happen is there would be a problem in making serials so what is the objective of copyright law the objective of copyright law is to let authors work on ideas get new and new works which are there so there has to be a cultural progress which has to be present but you don't have to give monopoly to the ideas which are present right so this is something which is very important that ideas cannot be monopolized but the work on which you are uh, the work that you create on that there is a copyright which is present now as i said the first thing which is very important is that the work has to be original what is the meaning of original original means not an inventive thought because thoughts and ideas and themes and plots are not copyrightable so you do not talk about original ideas you do not talk about original <coughs> concepts or themes but what you say for originality is that the expression must originate from the author so the expression can be literary expression it can be musical expression it can be making of a film making of a play or different kinds of uh, you know the works which you create so that has to be original means that has to originate from you if it does not originate from you then that is not your work because you know many people say uh, what is copyright copyright is not a right to copy so you cannot copy another person's work it is basically right to make copies of your own work so that means you have to create a work first and when you create a work you have certain rights which have been given under the act and by and large we'll talk about the various categories of rights but the rights are the right to make a copy of your work how you make a copy you can translate you can um, make a film you can make a play i'll come to all those things later on but that is what copyright basically means now you see you do not have to begin from ground zero because things are already there in the world so when things are already there you have to pick and choose according to your own mind like for example making of a story there may be different plots which are too common there may be different themes which may be too common you cannot monopolize them but how you string them together like for example this is a necklace that i'm wearing how this has been put together will make what a story is and make an original work right so uh, but as far as the test of originality is concerned you know the tests if you look at the courts you will find out the tests are not very high tests uh, even sometimes what happens is uh, i wouldn't say trivial changes cannot be taken as creating of a work but you may have a base on that you build up and when you build up something that would be created as a new work and many times what happens is when you change the medium then by change of a medium like for example if there is a play which is made uh, plays you have live uh, you cannot show effects in the theaters which is slightly possible nowadays but still not as many effects as you can show in a film like for example in a play if a small boy has to grow to a big boy you will take at least 3 4 minutes to show change of stage change of performers and coming and showing that a little boy has turned into a man but when it comes to a film like for example if any one of you've seen hathi meri sathi or any film for that matter you just find somebody kicking the ball a small boy is kicking the ball and the next shot is that there is a man which is standing so what i'm trying to tell you is if there is a play and this play you convert it into a film the medium is changing when the medium changes there may be similarities which may be present 
but you are in a position to add a number of things into it when you add a lot of other things then many times what happens is it is said that a new work has been created which is copyrightable one of the cases which came up which we normally treat as the you know for 20 years after that there was no supreme court case that was the first supreme court case it came i think in 1976 rg anand and in rg anand's case there was this uh, play hum hindustani play which was uh, which was running into theaters and then there's another person who made the film called new delhi if you look at the film and the play there were many similarities the similarities were with regard to the theme of provincialism the theme of parochialism in marriage and in renting out premises but more than this in the film they also showed that we have a caste ridden society and there are problems of dowry and these problems of dowry and caste ridden society got integrated into the story of the film so the court held that the film was not a copy of the play film did not infringe the play film was a new work which had come into existence because the two were totally distinguishable there was there were similarities but they were distinguishable works the expression given by the producer of the film was different from the expression given by the play director and both of them were treated as separate works so what happens when the theme is the same or idea is the same similarities may arise but just because there are similarities you cannot say that one is an infringement of the other work both of them may be treated as separate works only like for example you know when this film came kal ho na ho there were many people who said that it is similar to suffer it is similar to the old film anand but they were treated as separate there is a theme that there is a you know the actor which is dying of a disease but he keeps happy and he keeps others happy this is what is the plot this is what is the theme on which there is no copyright so kal ho na ho is not infringement of anand kal ho na is a new work anand is a separate work so similarities are there that's very important to understand similarities might be there but one is not infringing on the work of the other so what we are looking for in originality is it is not novelty in the intellectual intellectual conception but we are looking for originality in the expression of the ideas so whether a typist when we say expression of ideas you know suppose i'm dictating something to you and when i'm dictating something the typist is or my pa is taking down in the shortened language and then converting it into his own language the question is does he get a copyright or i get a copyright the answer there is that i get a copyright so the typists or those people who are taking down notes do not get a copyright but it's not that simple you know there was a old there's a very old case which is called um, donohue versus uh, one second the name of the case is donio versus allied newspapers now in this case there's a jockey and there's a, a freelance uh, um, uh, journalist by the name felstead he goes to him and he interviews him and when he interviews him he takes down notes and after taking down notes what he does is he does take the writings back to uh, uh, this person uh, donohue and asks him that is it all right and donohue says yes is yes, this is perfect etc and uh, felstead goes back and writes articles the question is on whom does the copyright vest the court held the copyright vests with felstead who's the journalist because he is the one who's given expression to the entire interview he did take interview dono who did give answers but when felstead wrote that was his expression so he gets a copyright and not dono you which gets a copyright on it now a similar kind of a case came up uh, which is najma abdullah versus orient longman this is a 1989 delhi high court uh, decision now in this case the somewhat similar but slightly different in this case what had happened was there was this person professor kabir you must have heard his name <clears throat> he goes to molana azad and he tells him that i want to write your biography 
so malana says that no i'm too lazy to write i can talk in urdu i can talk in english but you are the one who's going to give expression you are the one who's going to write in english so kapir said all right i'll do that now kabir sits with molana day in and day out and uh, molana keeps speaking in whatever language kabir keeps writing and then after writing he brings the script to molana azad molana azad makes changes in the script which is accepted by kabir so both of them are sitting together and working on the script so when both of them work together the question is on whom does the copyright vest as in dono use case with the journalist so with kabir here or with molana and kabir both or separately the court held it's a joint work now the question is why did the court not say it's a joint work in dono hughes case the first thing is that in dono hughes case the concept of joint authorship was not even argued but in najma abdullah it was argued so and secondly in uh, while dono hughes case came up there was no definition for joint authorship which is present now and thirdly the main difference is that in dono hughes case it was not the expression of dono you in this case do kabir is giving the expression but when he goes back to molana both of them sit together and look at the language so looking at the language means the intellectually both of them are sitting together and working on the script together so when that togetherness is there it is both of them become joint authors you know there was this i don't know how many of you have heard of this case or not uh, there's this barbara taylor versus uh, sahara media case uh, this case came up before calcutta high court and if you read uh, the judgment you will find that a number of questions you know were raised by and a number of instances were uh, raised by uh, the court there and they said that uh, there are certain characters which are too common there are certain plots which are too common there are certain emotions which are too common now should we grant protection to them the answer to that given by the court is no you are not to give protection to you are not to give protection to these things what you have to give protection to is basically the expression of an idea which is present right so this is with regard to idea expression dichotomy uh, so again even uh, even if i have to repeat i say a few things first what i've said is copyright is a statutory right secondly the works in which copyright subsist are original literary dramatic musical artistic works cinematograph films and sound recordings third copyright is automatically acquired the moment you create a work so there is no need for registration registration only provides a prima facie evidence and fourth what is the test of originality the test of originality is basically that the expression must emerge from you you are the one who is the originator of the expression and not anybody else then there is no copyright on an idea but there is copyright on the expression of an idea now if this is clear i move forward what we find out is that territorially and temporally there is a lot of uh, uh, you know advancement which is taking place especially in the field of broadcasting we find that there are serials which are running into seasons after season and every season has so many episodes now suppose if i write a concept because i cannot write all the episodes and take to the uh, tv people and ask them that would you show it on your tv writing of all those episodes will take a lifetime and i cannot spend the lifetime and then take the work to tv people so what i do is i write a concept note saying that this is what i think of showing of you know this is the uh plot these are going to be the plots this is going to be the theme this is how it is going to run and i take it to a tv channel and i tell them that this is the kind of program that i want to make so it has to be shown on your uh, you know channel now what tv people do is they listen to this person and they say all right uh very good uh this is a nice concept but we'll we'll look into the matter 
when the person goes away they start working on that particular concept and start showing episodes now when you as an author or you as the originator of that concept when you see that on tv what will happen to you you will get very agitated so you go back to them and you tell them that this is my concept that i gave you i should be given protection i should be i should you should pay me there's some money which has to come to me so the tv channel says no 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 don't you know there is no copyright on an idea so you only came with an idea to us now what do you do when you go to the court and this has happened in a number of cases the person goes to the court and says that i wrote down a concept with adequate details gave it to the tv people in confidence that either they will buy this from me but they will not use it but they have used it so but at the same time you are saying that there is no copyright in an idea where what do i do now so technological advancement cannot take away the ideas of people so what the court did was there are two and two there are in fact a number of cases now the first one which came was anil gupta versus kunal das gupta's case and then there was the z telefilms case then you have the urmi jowarkar case in all these cases the court held that if you write the idea that means if you write the concept note in detail and give it to tv people as a confidential uh, you know contract or information to them that you are the one who's going to make it then there is a copyright which is present on the concept note so as far as the broadcasting industry is concerned now there are three things no copyright on an idea there is a copyright when concept note is written down and of course there is a copyright on the serial or the episodes or whatever is being made now the question is who has the copyright who is the owner of the copyright you know the word copyright looks to be a singular term but it is not a singular term it is a number of rights are present under it if you look at section 14 section 14 says copyright means and so on so forth and it gives you you know for literary dramatic musical works there is one set of rights for artistic works there's another set of rights for cinematograph films and for sound recordings there are separate sets of rights and for computer programs along with literary work you've got some more rights so that means what you have to do is first of all find out what is the kind of work that you are talking about second once you identify the work under section 13 you now go to section 14 to find out what are the rights that you have and along with section 14 section 17 has to be read because section 17 says the fundamental rule is that author is the owner of the copyright but there are certain situations when author is not the copyright owner meaning thereby that there is a difference between author of work and owner of copyright to give an example if i go to a photographer and i tell him i pay him some money and i say that you take my photograph right now the author of the photograph is the photographer but the owner of the copyright is me who has paid money to him this is called commissioned work for valuable consideration which is given under section 17 section 17 also talks about suppose i'm working i'm working for the university and university as a part of my work i have to write something for the university now when it is as a part of the work that means my contract of services that this is the kind of uh, thing that i'm going to work for the university then i am the author but university becomes the owner so section 13 14 17 all of them become very important and they have to read and you have to read them together depending upon what is the kind of uh, a problem that you are basically looking at right now uh, to give you some rights if you look at section 14 you will find out the rights are i'm not going to rattle off the rights to you as i said the basic thing is right to make reproduction of your work which is called reproduction right right to store your work by electronic means 
right to make a public performance right to issue copies of the work right to make a translation right to make an adaptation right to make a film right to make sound recording which means if i write one story and all these rights are there with me these are called exclusive economic rights of the author i can make money by various situations i can give to a for trans i have written the work in english i can give it to a because a is from punjab and that person comes and tells me that people in my you know some people do not know english so therefore i want the work to be there in punjabi also so i tell him all right take my work give me money translate give me money so another one comes from andhra i said all right translate in your language give me money the third one comes and says i want to make a film i said all right take my work give me money so that is why all these rights make me get economy out of it so they are called exclusive economic rights so that's one bundle of rights that i have under section 14 the copyright act talks about other rights also belonging to the author one such category of rights is called moral rights or special rights which is given under section 57 now all these exclusive economic rights are for a particular period of time section 22 to section 29 talk about that period and in this entire period you will find out there are basically two dates which are important depending upon the kind of work that you are talking about one is the date of the death of the author and the other is the date of publication of the work now you will have to read these sections but even without reading the sections i'm telling you if i am writing something i'm a live person you can identify me that is dr alka chavla for calculating the number of years my date of death becomes important but when if somebody there is a government work there is a you know a, some official in some government doing it as a part of the government work is doing it then you don't identify that individual you say it is the government government doesn't come or die right so what you say there is date of publication is important that's why i said depending upon the kind of work that you're talking about two dates which are important are either date of death or date of publication i'm not going into the details where date of death where date of publication is required so exclusive economic rights are for a particular period of time but thereafter even when the author dies there are two rights which remain with the author for perpetuity and it is the legal representatives who can uh, basically enforce those rights one is which is called right of uh, uh, right to paternity and the second one is right to integrity right to paternity means the author would always remain the author and right to integrity means that no one can distort my work in a manner that you know brings disrepute to me so there cannot be mutilation distortion or uh, affecting my uh, reputation that is what is present so i think i can still uh, say a few more things and then we can uh, take questions uh, because copyright act is as it is a, it's a very technical kind of a subject i cannot uh, go into the technicalities at the moment all right the next bundles which are present are the first i told you is the exclusive economic rights which is given under section 14 moral rights which are two which is the right to uh, paternity and right to integrity which is given under section 57 there is also a, a right which is called resale share right which is uh, present in case of manuscripts paintings etc uh, then there are rights which are called neighboring rights now as far as neighboring rights are concerned uh, we don't have the concept of you know the the term neighboring rights is not given in our act but under international conventions there are three sets of rights which are talked about as neighboring rights the first one is called the rights of producers of phonograms which is the producer of sound recordings which we have under section 14 right the second one is called the rights of the broadcasting organizations and the third is the rights of the performers broadcasting organizations are given rights under section 37 and performers are given rights under section 
38. So there are three categories of rights which fall under neighboring rights. They are rights of producers of phonograms, which is a part of the copyright under section 14. Rights of broadcasting organizations, which is given under section 37. And rights of performers, which are given under section 38. So these three together are referred to as neighboring rights. They are also called related rights. Uh, why they are called neighboring rights or related rights is basically how the concept started was, uh, you know, uh, for example, if like for I am at the moment giving a live lecture. So what virtual lawyer does is they call me here and they record my lecture. And later on, they keep on showing my recording. Now, this is all a pro bono thing. But had it been a profit making uh, body, they record it and they keep on showing my recording. And they tell me, yes, now you please go away. We've got your recording and we'll keep your recording uh, to people. So, I have become unemployed because of technology. Technology recorded my lecture and made me unemployed. So, I am a performer. So, what do I do? So, I go to the government and tell them that, look here, please, my rights need to be protected. If ever, you know, uh, a thing has to be recorded, you have to take my permission. And for granting permissions, you get money. Right? So, this is how the concept of neighbors and the related rights started. Performers started asking for rights, broadcasting organizations started asking for rights and the producers of the sound recordings also. So these three categories together, they fall under <coughs> neighboring rights. Now the next thing which I would like to take up is uh, what is referred to as the various remedies which are the various remedies which are present. Uh, should I take, uh, I would like to ask Mr. Govan, should I first take remedies and then take questions or uh, should I just proceed? What do you say? I would rather, I would like to take questions of people so that, you know, uh, they can, uh, whatever they want, I can specifically uh, talk about that. Janvi, Govan, both of you, if you are there. I would like you to uh, join and let me know uh, that how should I uh, go about because I would like people to ask me questions and uh, I give answers so that you know whatever they want it's better to speak on that. As far as remedies are concerned till Govin gives an answer to me. Uh, as far as remedies are concerned, uh, Govin will send the request. As far as remedies are concerned, there are basically uh, two remedies which are present. Administrative remedies, civil remedies and criminal remedies. Civil and criminal. Hello ma'am. Hello ma'am. Oh, hi. Yes. So there, there, there's Hello. Gobind. So what do you say? Yes, I, you can, uh, you know, people, if you have some questions or if you want me to speak on something, um, no, no, ma'am. Uh, you're right. I will. Uh, there are a few questions that have come. Up. All right. And then you, you can finish talking about remedies. And if you want, we can have another Q and A even after that, as you wish, ma'am. No, you can uh, ask me questions and then I can continue because I would, you know, oh. this is this one way traffic. I don't like. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I understand. I I'm understand. used to two way traffic. You you used to teaching a whole class. Uh, as yes. if I may say <clears throat> before that is when I did talk to like students. <laughs> they used to say that no one in your class ever came for the attendance. They came just for the knowledge. And now after hearing you talk, I know why. <laughs> I would have sat in your class just to hear you. Every, all the great all right. things you, you've said, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, there are a few questions. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of them. Uh, we'll, uh, can I start with them, ma'am? Yes, yes, please. You just okay, give me one or two questions so that I can cop, uh, talk about that and then go further. Yes. So ma'am, someone, uh, Ms. Kajal Chand has asked what are neighboring rights, but you've already answered that. Okay. Uh, Parvesh uh, Sharma has asked, is copyright infringement, can you, can, can copyright infringement be called plagiarism? Or is plagiarism a different concept? If, can it be plagiarism? If a sentence or a paragraph is lifted from a book or any literary work and, you know, copy, exact copy put somewhere else. Would that be copyright infringement or plagiarism, ma'am? Alright. Now, that's a, 
that's a very very important question nowadays see yeah. first of all i would like to say that copyright infringement is whenever you infringe a copyright under the copyright act it's yes, a legal term whereas mm-hmm. plagiarism is concerned plagiarism plagiarism is a common english language term yes, now what happens is what is happening nowadays is that every university is having its own ipr policy right like for example one of the things which it which is given under ipr policies of various universities is they also refer to something as self plagiarism self plagiarism means that i have written something and now i write another article using my first article i cannot do that why i cannot do it is as far as copyright infringement is concerned this is no copyright infringement because it's my work when it's my work i can reuse it i can sell it i can throw it i can relinquish rights on it i can do anything that i want to do i can assign it i can license it to anyone but as far as my university is concerned my university says that you are a professor you have to get into different research activities you have to progress you have to go further we don't want you to stick to just one research and keep on making articles out of it so that is self plagiarism which is punishable by my university right my my university means any university which has some kind of uh, you know this kind of a policy so plagiarism is a term which is used by research institutions by educational institutions and copyright infringement is a legal term so i may not be violating copyright act but i may be violating my terms of appointment with the institution with which i am appointed right so that is the difference i hope i made myself clear now yeah. coming to whether you can pick up a paragraph or a sentence or not now as far as that is concerned you know you must have seen that when you pick up some paragraph or you pick up sentences it is suppose if it is your pen i can i pick that up the answer is no right i have to say this is a pen belonging to govind similarly my work is my property you cannot just pick up sentences and paragraphs from my work so what you you don't need my permission because there's okay there's some concept which i didn't deal with it's called fair dealing provision fair dealing provision is given under section 52 of the copyright act and this fair dealing provision has a number of clauses it's i think around 42 to 44 clauses it has running into four pages which says what is fair dealing and what is not fair dealing so when you use a work say for example for review or for your personal uh, use that is not amounting to uh, uh, or you use it for research or you use it for teaching you don't have to take the permission of the author concerned so when you don't take the permission means but you're not taking the permission because if you were to write one article and take permissions of hundreds of authors your life would be gone you'll be dead by that time and no article would come into existence so what you need to do is at least as a footnote or an end note acknowledge that you've taken from such and such person right now if you don't acknowledge it may not be copyright infringement but it will amount to plagiarism because copyright infringement is copyright infringement means section 14 has given me certain rights as an author or owner of the work i you cannot do any of those things without my authorization right now here but there is a fair dealing provision which says that you can pick up paragraphs for your personal use for research etc but you cannot make a substantial copy now you've taken one paragraph so that comes under fair dealing you've not made a substantial copy so that is not an infringement so is everything right the answer is no it's still not right so what is not right it amounts to plagiarism okay so plagiarism is a common english language term depending upon what is plagiarism what is not plagiarism depending upon the uh, various policies which various institutions have whereas copyright infringement is completely a legal term all right all right so basically it's not allowed it is not you cannot no. pick up a sentence or a paragraph and you cannot even if no. it's not copyright infringement somewhere it's going to be plagiarism so no, it it's is- always better you see and since this is a developing field 
it's always better and it and it should be morally also you should acknowledge the person whose paragraph you're taking whose idea you're taking whose uh, you know sentences that you're taking after all those are belonging to somebody else so you should acknowledge otherwise it's not right oh, no. Uh, Ma'am, okay. this is an update. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Kajal Chand again. Can PDF version of newspapers be stopped? Uh, I think there was a case regarding the Dhanik Jagran case recently, where on Telegram they were uh, circulating the PDF copy of, and they were stopped. No, no. This is not. You can't stop PDF copy of the same newspaper. What you're doing is that you cannot pick up from someone else and put it on your site. That's amounting to infringement. Oh, okay. So a PDF copy in a newspaper can be circulated. No, you can't because you see when you circulate, circulate is ah. meaning what? You have to again go back to Section fourteen. Section fourteen okay. says reproduction right, issuing of copies right, uh, performance right. All these rights belong to the owner, right? So when you circulate the copies, what are you doing? You are infringing the right of someone. So whether it is PDF or it is in the word format, how does it make a difference? You're picking up someone's work and you're distributing it. That is something which you cannot do. But ma'am, in this it. scenario, newspaper is scanned and made into a PDF copy. What about that scenario? So you're reproducing. Yeah, you're reproducing right. basically. In a you're reproducing. Standard. So reprodu reproduction is the right of the uh, owner of the copyright. Okay. So, so then you that cannot. You cannot do so. Okay. Okay. Right? All right. And you know, uh, uh, there are these principles. Uh, uh, just one thing more, which I want to say is, people think that uh, once you go on the net, it is in public domain. No, it is not that. All the principles which are applicable to the print media are also applicable to internet, because internet is basically a communication technology. It is a medium through which you are communicating. The medium is changing, but just yeah. because the medium is changing. You cannot violate the copyright law. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, so, when you were talking about concept notes, ma'am, uh, Thakrin, Miss Thakrin uh, asked, "Reality shows are example of this, if I am not mistaken." Uh, reality shows, ma'am, they usually have one format where uh, basic, like Big Boss. Let's take example of Big Boss, one of the most watched reality shows, uh, owned by Endem All, and. They, uh, in it, it's always broadcast. If I'm not wrong, in almost forty, fifty countries, they have the same concept everywhere. They, they have Big Boss, Big Brother. Where, uh, so, are they protected by the concept note example you were giving now? See, uh, once uh, there are steps. The first is an idea. The yes, idea you convert it into a concept. The yes. concept, in confidence, you give it to someone to make use of. once this concept you know this concept will get protection only if the idea is a novel idea okay. you know we don't have concept of novelty in copyright law but that has been brought in by courts and very rightly so and what they have said is uh, like i'll give you an example you know in anil gupta versus kunal das gupta i think that was the case which is just talking anil about the concept of which is yes, copying up uh, which is talking about the concept of swimmer Yes, ma'am. Now you may now in this case the channel brought up a program where any girl, uh, you know, the program showed uh, that there are certain boys in front of you, and you know you use your uh, various uh, methodologies of picking up a boy and having a groom for yourself. Now, swimmer, if we see, we've got two swimmers in our mythology. One is Sita ka swimmer, and second is Draupadi ka swimmer. But those are hardly swimmers because swimmer means swam apna var chunna. ठीक? In Sita's case, Janak ji ne bola, whoever picks up the Dhanush. Yes, Draupadi ke case mein, Draupadi ke pita ji ne bola, whoever shoots the eye of the fish. So yes, those are conditions. So this was a novel concept where you are yourself picking up your groom. So when the concept is novel, you get copyright on the concept, right? now once the concept gets into public domain it becomes an idea again once it becomes an idea anyone can now pick it up okay but once we come to reality shows these are all you know uh, these are all ideas but not simply ideas they are done in certain formats 
when you pick up the formatting when you pick up the entire the way it is being done the entire sequencing and formatting to that mostly the courts uh, you know we still don't have uh, i don't think we have a case on this because normally in such cases out of court settlements take place but as the situation goes these formattings are copyrightable okay because okay. there is no creativity which is going into it for creation of a program the sequencing for example when i say a story what is a story suppose in a story there is a separation there is flood there is drought there is something 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 taking place but what is happening is how you put the plots together put the plots together and that needs out a story so one story may have a plot to z plot a b c d going on and other story is a e f something that's another story which is happening but it's yes. a separate story. yes right but you can't simply pick up the entire concept in these reality shows you will find out they are always it based on such and such show and uh, uh, there are agreements between them uh, to which we are not privy to so okay, okay. so matlab so there so there is a way almost you can say that it has to be novel before it can be protected the uh, in and in all copyright you know you will find mostly the copyright provision saying subject to agreement so there are there are agreements happening between parties you can't uh, there is a copyright on the formatting on the way program is running you cannot simply pick that up that simple uh, copyright infringement all right uh, moving on to the next question ma'am uh, ma'am can you throw some light on the rights of audio visual performance all right see this is a concept Uh, uh, I mean, this is an amendment which came in 2012. You will find, uh, first of all, performers were not given any rights under the Copyright Act, our Copyright Act. They, for the first time, live performers were given rights in 1994. Now, thereafter, in 2012, audiovisual performers—that means those who act in a film—have been given very limited rights. You will find that in any film, there are two kinds of actors which are present. one is to whom you give credits and the other which are not to be seen in the credits they are called extras right now to whom you give credits they have now exclusive economic rights in the sense previously what was happening suppose i am acting in a film then i assign all my performing rights to the producer of the film but now what is happening my assignment is limited in the sense that if my performance of the film is used by the producer for something other than showing of a film so for example they give it for an advertisement then i have to be given and the producer gets profit out of it obviously because when producer gives a performance to someone he will get profit right so now me as an audio visual performer will have a share in the profit which the producer is having producer entered into an agreement with me for working in the film but my performance is being used for something else so when you use it for something else now after 2012 amendment you have to share it with me so now right. there are different kinds of performers live performers audio visual performers with credits and audio visual performers without credits that's that's actually very interesting ma'am that's that's Major good ma'am. Ah, uh, ma'am. Second point. Second question is, what are cover versions, ma'am? See, cover versions are like, for example, uh, Lata Mangi. Uh, I, sorry, I don't know many names of nowadays your uh, singers. <laughs> Suppose Lata Mangeshkar, Muhammad Rafi, they have sung some song, right? So now, uh, previously, what was happening? There was this section fifty-two one J. of the uh, you know the fair dealings provision, which said that after two years. you can make a cover version uh, meaning that some different singers with different uh, musicians the same song can be had now this 521j is now um, uh, repealed from the act and uh, now there is a provision which is given in the uh, which is called statutory licensing the cover version is still permissible but what is happening is it's only after 5 years of which the song has come and there is a limitation that you must at least give make 50000 copies and advance 
of you know the royalty has to be given to the person the original producer of uh, the sound recording that you're talking about so cover versions are basically some other singers and some other musicians but that can be done only after 5 years and previously it was 2 years previously there was no number which was mentioned now the number is you have to make 50000 copies previously you know people were giving some 2% royalty or something now today 10% royalty has to be given so you're making cover versions still permissible but with lot of limitations which are present okay okay, okay. thank you thank so you for elaborating on that statutory that. license for that this is actually because cover version that's actually thanks for elaborating on that because a lot of young people nowadays do put out cover songs on youtube and everything they hear a no, song you know you can't you uh, you know previously what was happening that people were for example <clears throat> it's a song given by lata mangeshkar you were giving lata mangeshkar's picture on it and underneath in small letters you are writing that it's sung by so and so today yes. you can't do it okay that's okay. it is license is you cannot mislead public like this you cannot give the name of the original singer you cannot give the photograph of the original singer oh that's actually right? very interesting that's very interesting ma'am all right ma'am i think uh, another very interesting question is uh, there is a recent which says that copyright is not a divine right the question is what are the rights of students to photo state books uh all right uh, yes that's very important you know with this rameshwari photo state case came up and we have uh, section 52 dealing with uh, again fair dealing provision one of the things there is that for the purposes of edu- you know actually what happened in that case was that this was uh, d school what they were doing was they were making course packs you know professors give readings like we have our case material uh, in our law faculty they had something which was called course packs and in course packs they gave readings so now what students do is they take a list of those readings go to the photostat person and get individually photostatted okay. now what the photostat person started doing was before the semester starts he used to make all the course packs and give it to students when they came so the question came up the publisher said that their their right to free production is being violated there is an infringement which is taking place so there the courts have held the, the made use of section 521 i i think which is talking about during the cor- the uh, teachers during the course of instruction can make use of or can reproduce material right now if i like i'm teaching now say for example i'm teaching now from 6 to 7 but before coming at 6 o'clock uh, so, sorry for cutting you short ma'am we'll have to end this session right. here because uh, okay. time limit so we'll end this and i'll i'll rejoin you in the next session ma'am I'll just rejoin you in the next session now. So sorry, ma'am. Okay.